발생했습니다. 뭐야? I like many folk have a laundry list of guilty pleasures that I am totally unapologetic for. One of my favorite things growing up next to glam rock was zombie flicks. I loved them, no bones about it. At first I was all about the schlock, but in time I grew to realize something crucial. A good zombie film was never about the zombies. In those, the shambling undead were allegories for social commentary or catalysts for humanistic stories, and that made me love them even more. But somewhere along the line, the tables were turned, and we, the ravenous force of pop culture, became the real monsters. And like that cliche was left to spread unchecked, and the once fearsome arbiters of social reflection became essentially pointless and rote. But this infection never spread to our friends in the East, with the newly released Train to Busan resurrecting my dormant love for this genre. Now whilst the plot here isn't anything particularly groundbreaking, what it does is quickly and effectively set up all the chess pieces for its grander narrative moves. The premise is essentially Return of the Living Dead meets Snakes on a Plane meets World War Z. But instead of coming off as a simple pastiche, Train to Busan manages to feel new, exciting, and socially relevant. The film starts with workaholic head fund manager and essentially absentee father Sok Woo taking his young daughter Su Ann to visit his ex-wife in Busan aboard the titular train. It's here we're introduced to our supporting cast, which ranges from businessmen lamenting the good old fascist career to sweet old ladies and even a couple of high school lovebirds. But as they're about to depart, a stumbling ashen-skinned woman boards the train and begins vomiting. However, the passengers and crew couldn't really care less and are more alarmed and disgusted by the homeless man that's also managed to sneak aboard but we'll return to that later. It's not long before the tease of an outbreak totally becomes one, and the action explodes in an exhilarating display, which is only exemplified by the inherent claustrophobia of the train and the fantastic cinematography. Now I know I said zombies aren't what's important about zombie films, but I would be amiss here not to mention them. The undead are a wonderful chimera of Eastern and Western horror tropes, combining to make something fresh and disturbing. They move in that contorted way that screams Japanese horror, but they also exhibit the agility and ferociousness of those seen in 28 Days Later. Unsurprisingly, it's not long before the survivors are outnumbered by the undead, but it's here that the cheeky film first begins to play with the established Hollywood formula. Instead of our protagonist suddenly expressing the virtues of a hero, he actively rallies against genre conventions, clinging to his elitism and selfish tendencies, going as far as to close the door to safety in the face of a pregnant woman and her husband. It takes the innate innocence of his daughter and the bravery of another passenger to show him that cooperation and altruism as opposed to self-preservation is key to survival. This theme alone is something that makes Train to Busan stand out. Instead of rolling out the people are the real monsters and doing what you must to survive motifs, it instead focuses on people becoming better, more caring versions of themselves in the face of tragedy and adversity. This combined with the scathing critique of classism, which decries the callousness inherent in our own social hierarchy, means that this is a zombie flick with something to say. Thankfully, these themes aren't lost amongst the onslaught of action, with Sokwu's gradual transformation at the behest of other survivors feeling organic and giving us time to emotionally connect with the eclectic cast. These scenes spent crafting genuine interactions and sentimental ties between the characters also results in the tension and unpredictable events of the narrative actually carrying an impactful gravitas. Who'd have thunk, eh? Ultimately, Train to Busan gives me a renewed hope for the future of a genre I once thought all but decayed. Stellar acting, believable characters, jaw-dropping set pieces, tension so thick you'd blunt your proverbial knife, and most importantly, having something to actually say, as opposed to just filling the frame with gore. For that, Train to Busan scores a motif-laden bullet train out of five. Catch it in select cinemas whilst you can. And that's about it for this edition of Player Attack. Thanks for watching. Next week, we look at a couple of the big, big sequels coming out in the next couple of months, starting with Mafia 3 and Gears of War 4. Both games are coming from new developers to the franchise, so it'll be interesting to see how they hold up. In the meantime, you can catch us at playerattack.com. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you've got something you want to say, send us an email, mailbox at playerattack.com, or just hop on our forums.
Also, if you want to support Player Attack, you can find us on Patreon and help us bring you the latest in gaming news, plus all these wonderful interviews and reviews from the world of video games. Till next week, I'm Jessica Citizen, and this is Player Attack.